Okay, um, thanks for the introduction. As I said, this is the talk about decoding air code and especially about information set decoding. And this is a joint work with Alexander May. So in our work, we provide improved running times for the decoding of random linear codes. For instance, in the full distance decoding case, we improve from the state of the art of 2 to the 0.0953 and to the running time of 2 to the 0.0885. N. As you can see, for half distance decoding, we were also able to improve the running time, but the gap is not as significant as in the full distance decoding case. Uh, our algorithm is based on the famous VJMM from Becker, Juma, and Neurer, which was presented at EuroCode 2012, and it uses zeroes neighbor techniques, which were presented by my and Oswald at EuroCode 2015. Because we uh, haven't used those zeroes neighbor techniques, um, our algorithm works best for high error rates. And as in some more crypto application, we have the hybrid algorithm for APN, which was presented at Crypto 2017 by Essa Kundla and Mein. Okay, let's define linear codes again. A linear code C is simply a k-dimensional subspace of the F2 to the N. And an alternative and perhaps more usable definition for this talk is via the parity check matrix P because then we can define the linear code as a set of all vectors which satisfy p times c is equal to zero. And um, every linear code comes with a distance d, which is defined simply as the minimum handy distance of two codes. Okay, the decoding problem is for this talk defined as follows. We are given a perfect check matrix p, which um, defines the linear code. We are also given um, some having weight omega and a vector x, which can be written as the sum of a code word c and some error vector e, which has having weight omega. And the target is to find this vector e because then, uh, because then we can recover c via x plus e. Okay, if you know, uh, take a look at the picture on the right side now. Um, the, the dots mark some code words, and around those code words, there are circles with diameter d minus 1. And if now some vector x lies um, on such a circle or in such a circle, then the decoding to the um, code word c is unique, because as we um, know, d is the minimum Hamming distance between two code words. And this already defines the first important case, namely the um, half distance decoding case. The second important case is the full distance decoding where um, the error rate omega is equal to d. Um, for every vector x, we can also define the syndrome s simply as p times x. And this syndrome has some important property because if x is the sum of some code word c and an error e, then s becomes p times e only because p times c is zero per definition. So if we want to compare decoding algorithms now, um, we look at the running time mainly. And the running time is a function of n, k, and d. So this is rather complicated. To simplify this, we first um, use the gilbert hashanov bound, which essentially tells us that we have, if we have a random linear code, then d is a function of n and k. So we can omit the d in the running time. The next step is that we um, only look at the maximum running time over all k, so at some worst case running time, we can omit the k to and the third and last step is that we assume exponential complexity and write the running time as 2 to the ct times n, where ct is some constant which will be our measurement for the complexity and for the algorithm. So the smaller the constant, the faster the algorithm, the better the algorithm. In the upper right corner, you can also see some image which shows this um, running time exponent over the code rate k over n. And as you can see, it also makes totally sense that we look at the worst case running times, that we only look at the top point. Okay, um, the first step in information set decoding was done by Fung in 1962. And he looked at the equation P times E is equal to the syndrome S. And the first thing he did was he rewrote this and added some more structure to the parity check matrix. 
and namely converged with it into this systematic form where we have the identity matrix on the right side. This can be simply done via Gaussian elimination, and of course, this, this also say changes to the symbol. And now we can also split the error vector E into two parts, E1 of length k and E2 of length n minus k. And the th second thing he did was to enforce the weight distribution on this error vector. Namely, E1 now has weight p, which has to be optimized, and E2 has weight omega minus p. And this can be done by our column permutation. The problem here is, of course, that we don't know E, so we don't know which permutation to choose, and if we get this weight distribution, but we can simply say that with some certain probability we can achieve this. Now we can rewrite this equation. We now have um, H E1 plus S is equal to E2. And um, to recall the steps from Kramer's algorithm now, um, the first step is to bring P into a systematic form. Then we permit the columns and hope for some good weight distribution. As a third step, we enumerate all vectors E1, so we enumerate all possible vectors of length k and weight P. For all those vectors, we simply check if H E1 plus S has heavy weight omega minus P. So if this E1 um, satisfies the equation. And if we didn't find a solution, then we have to try again. Okay, over the years there were many improvements to Primus algorithm and many advanced ideas. And um, the bar on the right side shows the improvement for the running time exponent. This is only a short overview. Um, the first important step was um, Stern in 1989 who first added some exit matching on, co on some coordinates, so we don't match for weight omega minus p only anymore, but we fix some zeros here. And the next step was um, to add some meet the middle technique to enumerate the vector E1. Then comes the famous BJMM, which added representation techniques, which are already known from subset sum problems and which also constructs the target vector in the binary search fashion. And the last step was the um, application of nearest neighbor search by my Watson. So our algorithm now uses those ideas, except the first one, we um, skip this, and we don't have any exit matching. This is very similar to the ball decoding algorithm by Bernstein et al. And another thing is we um, divide um, the error vector E2, this part, into blocks of different weight and get more equation to this. Okay, now I will explain de into detail the representation techniques and the division into blocks. So representations. The main idea is to split the vector again and write one part of the vector, what was formerly E1 as a sum of two vectors, now E1 plus E2, which have to add up to some weight P. This um, yields us many possible combinations and more solutions. So, for instance, if you look at the vector E at the bottom, the dark parts here mark the ones, and there are many possible combinations of vectors E1 and E2, which add up to the same vector E. It only depends on um, where the runs are and if they cancel out or if they are found in the target vector E. And the next thing, the division to block, which is new in our algorithm, is um, that we um, divide the part E3 of weight omega minus P in two blocks now, where the first block has some weight omega 1 and the second block has some weight omega 2. This gives us two main equations. So like before in front, we only had one equation, now we have two equations in this simple case. First equation is H1 plus H2 plus S has sending weight omega 1 on the first block, and in the second equation it needs to have heavy weight omega 2 on the second block. So as you can already see, there are many parameters which we have to optimize later. P, omega 1, and omega 2. So the target vector our algorithm wants to construct looks like this. The first part is the sum of two vectors E1 and E2, which sum up to weight P and have weight K. And um, the second part is the vector E3, which is divided into two blocks of weight omega 1 and omega 2. 
let's note that we can write um, E3 as a sum of H1, H2, and S. So the first th thing we do here is we use representations. We take vectors E1 and E2, and we also fix the weight of those vectors. It's some new weight P1, and we add them to get some vector of weight P. But we don't take all vectors, we only take vectors which satisfy that H E1, uh, respectively H E2 plus F S, have weight omega 3 on the last block. The next step is we add the middle technique by Stern to construct, for example, E1. Now E1 is uh, constructed from two vectors of length k over 2 and weight P1 over 2. If we, if we merge such two vectors, they automatically have weight, K, uh, weight P1 and length K. We we'll do the same for the vector E2. And um, as you can see, this um, gives some binary search structure, structure as in the VGEN. Okay, let's recall the steps our algorithm does now. First of all, we enumerate again. We enumerate vectors of length K over 2 and weight P1 over 2 and we store them like in the graph into um, four lists. Then we run a nearest neighbor search for weight omega 3. The nearest neighbor search is essentially an algorithm which gets two lists as an input and searches for vectors which have some specific handling distance or which add up to this handling distance. And we search for vectors which have the correct handling distance for our um, two lists we want to get. So we construct the right D1 and E2. Now on the two remaining lists, we run another nearest neighbor search for weight omega 1, so that we have um, weight omega 1 on the first block of what will be our vector E3. And of course, E1 and E2 don't add up automatically to weight P now, so we have to filter for weight P here. We discard simply all vectors which don't have weight P here. And we do the same on the last block, where we add up vectors of weight omega 3. We discard all vectors which don't have weight omega 2. Yeah, that's our, our idea for our algorithm. Of course, this can be generalized for more layers. We can simply um, choose more lists and do this again, then maybe one step above. And we use the nearest neighbor search whenever possible. Uh, the nearest neighbor search for my Otsuroff. The problem here is that this algorithm has some restriction which has to be satisfied. And if it's not satisfied, we have to simply choose some simple nearest neighbor search. Um, yeah, for those of you who know the BJMM, the main differences are that we use nearest neighbor search on every level now and that we don't have any Excel matching. Let's talk about some results. Um, here we have the running time exponent over the code rate k over n for full distance decoding. These are the top curves and for half distance decoding at the bottom for different algorithms. And as you can see, the BGMM always beats final, of course, and our algorithm always um, gives a lower running time exponent over the whole spectrum of code rates. And the gap is quite huge for full list decoding, but for half list decoding, it's only a minor gap, and there's only a minor improvement. Now we look at the worst case um, scenario, um, and the running time exponent CT again, and also at the running time uh, at the memory exponent CM from um, the BJMM with the nearest neighbors and our algorithms, and for different layers in the binary search tree. I already highlighted the most important numbers here, and as you can see, the BGMM with nearest neighbors is optimal if one chooses four layers, then we have a running time exponent of 0.0953, and our algorithm already um, provides a lower running time exponent if we only use three layers, and an even better running time exponent if we use four layers. But here we, we don't really know if four layers is optimal because for five layers the algorithm has so many parameters we, were simply a, we weren't simply able um, to optimize it anymore. So this is one more problem perhaps to simplify our algorithm to reduce the number of parameters so that one can optimize it for even more layers and maybe get even better running charts. 
in the same holds for the half distance encoding case where we um, beat the PJM with the nearest neighbors with four layers. If we now look at the memory exponent, we can see that we already uh, also improve here in both full distance and half distance encoding. So one application for crypto is um, the hybrid algorithm for LPN. First, let's recall what LPN is. Here in this problem, we are given samples of the form AI and BI, where AI is some vector of length k, and the BI is um, simply the sum of AI times S plus BI, where S is our secret one to cut find, which is also a vector of length k, and BI is some error which is run with probability tau. Um, if we now have n such samples, we can write this as a um, matrix A and some vector B, where B satisfies uh, A times S plus E, and the ith row of A and B is simply AI and BI. Here also the connection to decoding comes here, because B is simply a noisy code word, and A, S is, is the code word we want to recover. So the hybrid algorithm now does the following. As the first step, um, the BKW algorithm is applied, which reduces the dimension of the given LPN problem, but this comes at the cost of an increased error rate. So, um, for example, if we have an LPN instance with dimension 512 and error 1 fourth, this is reduced to dimension 117, but the uh, error becomes nearly one half. And as the second step, this new instance is then solved by a decoding algorithm. And let's compare the different algorithms now. As you can see, both Pranger and BJM, everything as neighbors, have a running time of 2 to 117 for this new instance, while our algorithm can reduce the running time to 2 to 75, and we are also able to reduce the memory consumption. Well, be careful here, this is only asymptotic running time. So polynomial factors are neglected, and so this is not the total bit complexity. Yeah, another graph of the um, of the running time exponent over the um, error tau. And here you can see again that our algorithm behaves best for um, large errors, and for small errors we only get a minor improvement. So to sum up, our algorithm provides improved running times for the decoding of random linear codes. And the reason for this is the heavy use of use neighbor techniques. And this also provides a superior algorithm in the hybrid framework for LPN. And as said before, an old problem is the complexity of our algorithm and the huge number of parameters which needs to be reduced in order to optimize the algorithm further. Yeah, thanks for your attention. Feel free to ask questions.